introduce my, 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 myself first. Uh, so uh, my name is Marie Anna Dilay. I am an associate professor of the Polytechnic National University, the Department of Applied Linguistics. And uh, uh, I'm privileged and honored to, uh, to, to be chairing this plenary session today, which will run till uh, 1 a.m. AM, as, we, as we know, according to our program. Uh, there will be 10 talks and uh, every speaker will have 15 minutes for their presentation, yes, and, and around five minutes for question and answer session. Uh, there might be some minor changes in the program, but we will try to, to stick to it. Uh, so before we start, so please, of course, mute your mics and, uh, and, uh, and let's start. So it's my honor and great pleasure to uh, introduce the first speaker, uh, Professor Marek Kuzniak uh, from University of Wroclaw, who will speak uh, on choices we live by, a socio-cognitive perspective. So Marek, uh, the floor is yours. Thank, Thank you, you for you coming. Thank you. You may can start. Can you hear me? Yes? Yes, we can hear Great. you. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me to be um, part of this conference, for having me here. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, okay, so um, I will try to um, make um, my presentation available to you. Hope, hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? May I have your confirmation? Yes, yes. Great, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, some some of the slides actually uh, contain some graphic content, so uh, it will be easier for us to follow that. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I would like to uh, briefly talk uh, today about, um, about choices we live by. Um, I, I would like to um, have a reflection on the behind the scenes let's say on the cognitive behind the, um, the scenes of, uh, of how, um, how we make choices, yes, um, on our everyday basis. Um, the context uh, for, for the talk is uh, it's one of the um, blogs uh, which I reached only recently. Um, it was one of the, um, it's one of the popular blogs um, in the United States. And um, one of the persons uh, who is not a scholar, who is not an academic, uh, wrote the following um, uh, as regards, as regards uh, choice yeah? and what they think about it. So um, in the blog we read, uh, of course, it's just um, the, the, the relevant accept. These kinds of choice, I mean, OK. Uh, the, the choices we make yeah, uh, define the area um, around uh, um, the initial, let's say, determination of having coffee or going out to lunch. Yeah? Uh, in geometry, the initial choice, um, the initial choice, uh, for example, would be a single point on the page. The rest of the choices supporting that initial decision, what kind of food and what kind of other things you do, define the area around it. Length times width, that's the area. So there are the choices that define the volume. Uh, length times um, um, uh, height and times depth of our lives, in which all of those things happen. So the fundamental choices um, uh, that we make about ourselves, uh, our beliefs, our emotions, other people, our work, how we see the rest of the world, seem to be sort of contained with uh, what is written in the blog as, 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 as the cube of choice. Yeah? Because you have this dimension of, uh, again, uh, length, um, width, depth. Uh, uh, that's, that's that's not mine. Yeah, that's what uh, what I read on the blog. I reached after actually um, I um, wrote the book um, on that thing. 
Yeah. So it's it's very striking. Yeah, that somewhere in the world, a very distant place in the United States, the person with I have no contact. Yeah. Um, made a similar reflection, albeit it, it's popular. It's a very popular kind of reflection on how uh, we may structure or how we may perceive uh, the scene on which we make choices. Uh, that the person um, sort of came to an idea that the best frame for discussing choices uh, is, is, is good. And this is exactly what I also had in mind when I uh, started the book, um, writing the book in, in 2017, and I finished that off in, in 2021 with the release in, in Palgrave. Um, that's, that's the book. And yeah, it seems that, that the cube might be considered the frame, yeah? the conceptual frame for this describing the way we make choices. Yeah, because when we look at, at our um, spatial temporal uh, scene on which we live, yeah, this seems to be structured by the cubic aspect, the, the aspect of the height, the aspect of the width, uh, the aspect of the width length plus time. All these may be well uh, dressed up, so to speak, in terms of uh, the model, the geometric attributes of the cube. I will come back to it. Uh, because- Excuse me, Professor, I'm really sorry. We can see only the first slide, but I guess you- Oh, you can the see, you can see uh -huh. the rest of the slides. Yeah. Okay, I just um, want- why terribly have... sorry for interrupting no 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 it's okay mariana but I, i'm just wondering what what i can do with this because uh, you, I... you can click on uh, each slide separately on the left uh, and i no. guess this this way we can okay we can... Uh, apologize for intruding okay. you can start can you, can you can start the full screen presentation and then switch to zoom and share the uh, full screen part You, you, you still can't see the frame. No, no, just the first slide was the title. Maybe try it. To, to yeah, I will try it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting me know about it. I didn't realize. Um, can you see this? We, yes, we can see the book. Uh, and the book. Uh, well, can you try to, to go further? And now I just moved one slide further. No, no, it's still the book. My God. Oh, Apologies for intruding. Uh, oh. Mark, you are sharing, uh, I think you are sharing now the uh, PowerPoint application. But your uh, full screen presentation, it's like uh, another screen. So either you uh, keep to a PowerPoint and simply uh, click up and down on, uh, on the sidebar, or you uh, um, close the uh, screen sharing with Zoom uh, without uh, closing the full screen presentation on PowerPoint, and then restart it, restart it just with the uh, full screen presentation. Alt, uh, alt tap from the full screen presentation to Zoom, close uh, screen sharing, and choose the uh, full screen presentation. Uh, okay, so now um... open the presentation and then share it. Okay, this way. It should work. All right, because uh -huh.
because there are so many interesting things there. So we eager to to see them and to to know them. <laughs> How about if I do this? Um, okay. Yeah, can, can you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe, okay. Maybe that's, it that's, works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, I'm with the frame uh, right now, um, the, the, the conceptual frame of the cube, which I um, which I said, uh, which I argue actually in my book, um, I released in 2021, might be relevant, uh, how relevant to structuring um, uh, our decision-making processes. And because the perspective is sociocognitive, um, uh, I believe that, that's, that this conceptual frame uh, might, um, might be modeled as some sort of prototypical, ideal kind of uh, representation of um, the human uh, uh, spatial temporal scene. And normally in our lives, we have lots of cube effects. For example, yeah, we have different types of um, cubes we, we, we can see, we can draw. Yeah, that's, that's, for example, the cube drawn by my 11-year-old uh, son. Yeah? Um, actually, he was younger when, when he drew that, but, but that's how, how, he could, how he could do that. Uh, we have other uh, cube effects we can observe. You have Rub Rubik's cube. We have uh, interiors, for example, uh, of uh, various places which are based on that cuboid um, kind of uh, plane. Um, we have yeah, other examples of exteriors. Uh, we have campus. Even the Institute of English Studies where I work um, is, is, is based on that uh, cubic uh, kind of uh, structure that, that's better seen from the inside. Yeah, when you when you go in, um, Professor Romanishin may actually confirm that it, it, it's 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 cubic. Um, all this idea um, um, of the cube, I want to say, we we are not normally aware of, but it's with us. Yeah, it accompanies uh, our lives, uh, it structures our lives, and in a sense determines our lives. It, the idea of the cube is based on the idea of balance, yeah, which we, which, which is derived from our experience of uh, um, uh, where we grow up. Uh, it's actually our bodily experience, yeah, keeping balance, as Krzyzewski says, uh, of the body um, uh, constitutes such fundamental experience that we are normally aware of until we lose that balance and strive to restore it. Maintaining balance allows us to retain the upward vertical position and continue forward towards the goal. Yeah, so that's the idea of the um, of, of the concept of balance. Yeah, which is which is constitutive of, of the cube. The cube uh, being uh, having all equal um, sides, uh, being being equal in all kinds of uh, dimensions. Yeah? Um, the linguistic exponents of balance um, are. Um, can can be seen uh, like like here you have examples of Petrushovsky again um, balance economy strike a balance harmony well balanced person uh, to give someone uh, a square deal um, we admire the grateful pause poise of the dancer a balanced diet um, and all our other kinds of examples they 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 they, they show that balance is with us yeah also that that we that we um, uh, perceive balance as something positive. Huh? Um, when, you, when you look at uh, this axiological aspects of uh, um, uh, evaluative aspects of the cube, uh, you may um, look at the uh, fundamental polarity that the cube um, um, sort of produces with the in and out elements. Yeah, um, 
Krzyszowski claims that uh, this is the, 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 the container, uh, the cubic, um, as the ideal representation of the container, um, uh, the, the axiology of that container is, is, is plus minus, but it's ambivalent in the sense that in can be perceived either as plus or as minus, uh, depending on how you see the container, whether you consider that a place where you can seek protection or uh, the place where um, uh, um, the place that constrains you, like, for example, when you are in prison, yeah? then you definitely consider in as minus. Whereas yeah, I mean. And yeah, uh, I know I'm, my time is <laughs> running. I, I, I just wanted to show you yeah, um, the, 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 the uh, fundamental attributes um, um, of, of that uh, uh, sort of cube I, I see as, as modeling our choices. Um, we have the front, uh, we have the back. Yeah? Of course, uh, the front is assigned ad hoc yeah? um, uh, in the sense that uh, we as humans, uh, um, our perception of the cube, the way we see it now, for example, yeah? uh, determines uh, what we consider as front, what we consider as back. So uh, cube doesn't have any inherent orientation. It is uh, assigned via our anthropocentric view of the world. Yeah? It's our position in the space uh, that determines which side we perceive as front and, um, um, and then by an, which, which is back, which is, which is up, which is down, and so on and so forth. Uh, um, so, uh, at the macrocosmic level, yeah, it seems that uh, the sphere, which we normally perceive when we go out, yeah, the hemispherical space, is actually contained within, within the cubic uh, macrostructure. Yeah? Um, but I believe that the, uh, the geometry of sphere and cube, they, they interpenetrate. Uh, with the outdoor and indoor perspectives. Um, uh, look, yeah, those two kind of uh, images, I, I hope you see them, yeah, they sort of uh, show you how things may become complemented, uh, um, where uh, the sphere is inscribed within the cube or the cube is inscribed within the sphere. I believe that. Uh, mm, uh, the outdoor and indoor perspectives, as I said, are uh, not mutually exclusive. Uh, the, 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 um, what, what the, 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 the fundamental thing is that uh, it seems that at this meso, meso level of our experience, yes, at this fundamental uh, level at which we perceive the world, it's the space and time is organized around, around the cube. And this is where we make the choices. I, I, I'm just concluding in a, in a second. Uh, uh, the, the choices we make on that spatial temporal scene yeah, produced its effect, uh, the, the effect. Uh, so the model is of course consequentialist now produces effects in the future. Individual choices may have social effects. Uh, our reflections, uh, mental uh, um, wealth may have its uh, effects in, in, in products, uh, tangible products. The discriminatory nature of choice produces uh, effects or may, is disseminated in society. Yeah? So discrimination, dissemination, uniqueness, commonality, Mental versus material, subjective, objective. I mean, there's, there's lots of dichotomies that can that are productive, uh, that may be sort of um, discussed uh, uh, within that that cubic uh, that cubic metaphor, uh, uh, that cubic uh, conceptual framework. Um, note that also the cube uh, has its front, back, up, down, left, right. Uh, it, it, having its front, back, up, down, left, right dimensions corresponds to 
uh, transparency, opacity, hierarchy, bottom-up participation, and time flow. So the kinds of categories that are well known in society. Huh? Um, so projected as human scale, such space time is cubic, yeah, the geometry of which is the effect of a blend where the perceived structural properties of space become emergent through human interaction with the external environment. And this is how this blend more or less looks. Uh, space time uh, cube uh, and the in the generic space that is the um, the, the source of uh, um, for uh, the conceptualization of space time in terms of cube you have this dimensions of width, length, and height, uh, all of them equal. And the choice cube, yeah, seen from the perspective of a human being who is inside that uh, spatial temporal cubic, uh, um, uh, cubically or uh, determined space could be uh, ideally um, modeled uh, as, as, as presented here. Yeah? So we are somewhere inside. Uh, we may be outside that cube in a way when we, we can project it different ways depending on our position. But generally, ideally, prototypically, we are inside that, 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 that cube and we can always go to ways at a given time. There's no uh, third way out. Yeah? You can either go A or you can go B. And hence the fundamental discriminatory nature of cube um that is actually that that is derived from from the um uh, uh spatial temporal and attributes uh, of space um and and lastly uh yeah this uh geometric produces um or uh, there may be two kinds of fundamental uh um, views of the decision making process that can be sort of uh, um, um, based on that uh, cubic ar architecture. That is the pyramid focused view, yeah, the, uh, where uh, we believe that decision making processes are based on hierarchical relations, uh, the up down perspective, or the uh, cube focused view. Of course, it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't preclude the, the pyramid, but the pyramid here, uh, as opposed to the previous slide, is no longer drawn in continuous, uh, with continuous lines, it's with dotted lines. It shows us that what is here in focus is, is the cubic architecture. What does that imply? Uh, coordination, balance, uh, participatory uh, uh, culture of decision-making process. Um, um, it is uh, the part of what uh, is uh, popularly known as uh, as uh, um, uh, sustainable yeah? um, development idea of uh, of culture development. But this is actually uh, um, uh, the story for for the discussion next time. So thank you very much, and I'm sorry again for all these technicalities. Uh, no, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We still have time, I guess, for, for at least one question because we are a bit late. Uh, so, are there any questions, dear audience? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Make it English of uh, Ukrainian lingua information of France, that's okay. Um, it's, uh, well, may, maybe one can uh, call this question uh, semi humorous, but uh, there is this uh, famous saying, uh, thinking outside of the box. Well, in this case, thinking outside of the cube. How can you, um, uh, or can you uh, uh, relate or um, explain this uh, saying in terms of your uh, choice cube theory is there any uh, correlation between this uh, saying and uh, the cube thank you very much uh, Nikita for this for this question but I believe that this is exactly what I alluded to at the at the end of my talk when I said that the anthropocentricity of the of the cubic architecture of uh, decision making process which I um, outlined here uh, Mm, uh, lets us perspectivize the cube uh, 
differently. I mean, you can be as a as a human being, uh, being in the space. You can you can project, for example, uh, uh, the perception uh, the perception uh, of the cube from the inside or from the outside. Yeah, for example, you can uh, being uh, let, let let me see uh, uh, let me uh, briefly comment on that of, on that um, external aspect. For example, you are a student and you're just of the university and you're just wondering how the decision making process um, um, in, in the in the in various bodies of the universities are uh, are made and uh, so the situation um, is external to you yes is extraneous to you as a, as, a, as a student because you have no influence you have no impact on on the decision making process you can only observe that so for you for example for for, for the student uh, the, 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 what they are confronted with is, is the cube of decision, the university cube of decision making process. Yeah. So this is like kind of out of the box situation. Yeah. Uh, in which you find yourself. So, so this, this, um, uh, the saying uh, shows us actually that, uh, yeah, that we may project our, uh, our scene as, as in, as out. Uh, depending on 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 the real context of the situation, and of course, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Thank you. Thank okay. you, Marek. <laughs> Thank you for a most interesting presentation, a very thought provoking one. Uh, thank you very much. And very much. Uh, let's uh, move on to our next speaker. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to. Uh, to introduce uh, the team of uh, researchers uh, uh, and uh, well, in particular, yes, Professor Volodymyr Shurokov uh, with uh, colleagues Irena Ostapova, Yevhena, uh, Yevhen Kuprianov, Alona Doroshenska, Mekita Yablochkov, Yuvia uh, Verbenko. Uh, who will uh, who represent Ukrainian Lingua Information Fund and uh, will speak on terminology dictionary digitalization. Uh, so, so dear professors, the floor is yours. You may start. Uh, well, I will uh, represent our uh, report, but uh, some of the uh, some of my co-authors are present here, and uh, uh, all questions uh, concerning technical uh, issues uh, of our uh, report uh, of our project. Uh, uh, spoken in this uh, report, will uh, you make uh, the questions you can also make uh, to them? Well, let me share my presentation. Uh, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Dear uh, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present our report devoted to terminology dictionary digitalization uh, prepared by um, uh, Ukrainian Lingua Informational Fund uh, team and uh, me. Uh, so, uh, in this work, we will demonstrate an effective approach uh, to transforming a paper dictionary into an online product on the example of uh, transforming dictionary of Ukrainian bi biological terminology into an online digital dictionary. Uh, the dictionary is designed to give the reader maximum information about uh, the current state of the Ukrainian national biological terminology, uh, as well as uh, equivalent forms of expression uh, of the relevant concept in Russian and English. Uh, uh, the project uh, implementation, namely transforming uh, uh, di the dictionary from paper into online uh, form, suggests um, various stages. First, uh, paper dictionary, namely analysis of its uh, the structure of the dictionary uh, entries, uh, the, so entire dictionary uh, text. Uh, then, uh, on the basis of this analysis, um, we built up uh, the structure of uh, lexicographic systems for this uh, dictionary. Uh, 
uh, followed by making the dictionary text, uh, marking the dictionary text with HTML text according to the structure of its uh, lexicographic uh, systems. Then we uh, made conversion of XML text of the dictionary into lexicographic database. And uh, the final stage, uh, uh, web site with, uh, uh, with its uh, website version of the dictionary with appropriate uh, interface. Uh, so, uh, the digital transformation of lexicographic works uh, requires some uh, general theoretical framework um, uh, to uh, describe and uh, represent uh, the widest possible class of uh, lexicographic objects. In our development, uh, we are based on the uh, theory of lexicographic systems uh, elaborated by Volodymyr Sharokov and successfully applied um, on, uh, on uh, different uh, electronic uh, dictionaries uh, published by Ukrainian Lingua Information Fund. So, uh, according to this uh, theory, uh, the dictionary is considered as a linguistic information uh, object. Uh, it is an abstract uh, object uh, focused on the implementation of comprehensive information description of lexical and uh, grammatical structures of particular language or a set of languages. Uh, the architecture of uh, the system corresponds to the standard level, a standard three level architecture uh, uh, of uh, information systems uh, I, A and C, N, S, I. Uh, it's a three spark, uh, and uh, according to which uh, the architecture of uh, any lexicographic uh, system consists of uh, consists of uh, conceptual, internal, and uh, external models. Uh, uh, and uh, here uh, uh, we represent uh, the conceptual model of uh, our. Uh, term uh, of our uh, terminological uh, dictionary. Uh, so uh, in this uh, formula, D means the object of model. In, uh, this is a dictionary of Ukrainian biological terminology. Uh, second element, I, uh, D, uh, this is a set of, uh, of uh, headword units uh, described in the dictionary. Uh, the third one is a set of descriptions uh, of these words uh, that corresponds to the text of dictionary entries. Uh, uh, sigma uh, B is a structure that is generated by uh, uh, B, certain operator, and uh, represents a system of meaningful relations that reflect uh, the semantics of the subject area under consideration. So uh, the conceptual model of the dictionary is based on the analysis uh, of printing version of the dictionary, uh, that is uh, typographic design, organization, and structure of uh, printed texts. Uh, and uh, all the uh, entry information elements are interpreted as uh, uh, B elements and uh, sigma uh, B uh, elements. Uh, uh, they, uh, let us uh, give uh, examples uh, of uh, uh, building a lexicographic system. So the text of the biological, uh, the dictionary of Ukrainian biological terminology, uh, we had from the beginning in the form of a PDF file. For convenience, these uh, files had been converted to uh, doc format in order to do some text conversion. Among these transformations, so we know that uh, we uh, that uh, um, we note uh, the following: the disclosure of reductions of a certain type. Uh, all dictionary article or dictionary entries were processed in this uh, way. Uh, here you can see the uh, example uh, of the dictionary entry uh, with Herbert uh, Pulsatsia Zagrudinina. So uh, following uh, the theory of uh, lexicographic systems, uh, the structure of uh, lexicographic system for the um, 
biological uh, terminology dictionary has been collaborating and uh, uh, this uh, model is uh, represented uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the form of a general uh, scheme. Uh, so um, here uh, you can uh, see the following uh, elements of uh, diction uh, uh, entry elements uh, of the uh, dictionary article uh, that uh, composing our uh, lexicographic uh, system. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, another example uh, of um, uh, uh, the, of the entry node not even uh, represented uh, in terms of this uh, model. Uh, so, uh, and uh, here we give the hierarchy of informational elements uh, in the lexicographic uh, system. Uh, the next step uh, was to automatically convert the dictionary text to XML document, which makes uh, it possible to explain all the structural elements uh, we have identified and uh, the relationships uh, between them. So here you can see the example uh, of uh, markup with uh, article text. Uh, uh, on the example of the entry titled Node uh, uh, Here, uh, the, uh, the, another example of XML markup uh, with article text uh, for the entry uh, uh, In future, it is planned on the basis of XML document to form appropriate database in automatic mode and uh, create a, a site. Uh, currently, uh, the works are underway uh, to create a database to and uh, developing the site interface. We have demonstrated that it is possible to digitize a paper dictionary and uh, to create a website. We believe that, that this is a good way to convert uh, uh, dictionaries, uh, paper dictionaries into XML and then uh, convert them into a web uh, version. The key is uh, to use standard components that can be used in other projects and to have simple data formats uh, that are uh, easy uh, to edit using free tools. So, uh, and um, for our interface, we um, specified uh, six uh, uh, requirements. First, it's a reproduction of the linear text uh, of the dictionary entries. Um, uh, then uh, providing access to all these elements uh, of, uh, of the uh, dictionary, at least uh, with the ability uh, of searching them, and then uh, providing the ability to make a sample of the entries on various structural uh, parameters, for example, pol uh, polysemy, the presence of uh, phrases, collocations, synonyms, uh, etc. And uh, of course, providing the possibility of conducting a full text uh, search of the content in the dictionary entries. Uh, fifth, complete, uh, perform uh, complete statistics on structural elements of the entry. And then, uh, uh, next one, ability to follow the links. Uh, as for discussions, uh, the steps uh, taken uh, gave such advantages. Uh, this allowed us to present the dictionary in a modern way. Then, uh, converting the data and uh, converting the data enabled uh, enabled us to catch many typos and inconsistencies uh, that uh, had been uh, overlooked in the book. So, uh, third, the proper XML will facilitate the implementation of the functional search function, uh, as well as simplify the creation of direct cross references on the website. Uh, if authors decide to make any additions uh, or changes uh, in future, they can do so using a modern dictionary editing system instead of a text uh, editor. And it becomes uh, possible to compose the book and uh, republish it. As for conclusion, uh, there are still uh, questions. It has been demonstrated that uh, it is possible to digitize a paper dictionary and save it in XML uh, and on the internet.
Uh, the key is uh, to use uh, standard components that can be reused in other projects and have simple data formats that are easy to edit with free tools. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation, for that contribution, which is very important. Uh, questions. So let's take questions, dear participants. Are there any questions? Then, uh, since nobody has read this last question, I will take the opportunity to ask uh, about uh, the biggest challenge of this project. What is it for you, for your team? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, the uh, biggest uh, challenge uh, uh, is uh, to, to uh, um, elaborate uh, um, our uh, theoretical uh, uh, the theoretical uh, uh, framework uh, uh, concerning uh, elaboration of the lexicographic systems th theory that would be applicable not only to this uh, specific uh, uh, project, namely uh, Ukrainian dictionary of uh, terminology, but in any other uh, term uh, dictionaries method for identifying uh, information elements uh, method of uh, uh, text uh, analyzing, uh, so that uh, was a uh, linguistic uh, challenge, linguistic part of the challenge. As for uh, technical part of the challenge, uh, uh, Mikit uh, Yabuchkov, uh, our programmer, who will uh, can answer. So uh, from technical point of view, uh, the biggest challenge. Yes, so, Mikita. Yes. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, from technical point of view, uh, and partly theoretical. Uh, the biggest challenge is the transition from uh, well, from usual classical uh, form of uh, form such a form of representation of dictionary, the uh, paper the printed linear uh, structure to uh, digital uh, to digital structure that is uh, in our uh, example it is. Uh, object-based, class-based uh, internal structure of the dictionary. Uh, we uh, had to think uh, several steps ahead uh, since uh, in modern times, in times of uh, <laughs> well, uh, we live in informational age, information is uh, indexed, it is uh, cross-referenced, uh, the access point for uh, different types of information, and in uh, our case, uh, it's um, different types of uh, uh, accessing different semantic meanings, uh, ex, uh, accessing uh, the accessing dictionary entries, not only through uh, main terms as we usually do in the dictionary. Uh, Sometimes, oftentimes, there is a usual uh, index, uh, alphabetical index. Sometimes there is uh, phraseology indexes, but uh, often uh, when we uh, read the printed article, we can see, for example, some divs, see uh, some other uh, article. We see other uh, linking elements and uh, well, uh, to summarize, for me uh, and for for me and for my colleagues that work on the technical uh, aspects, it is the uh, most uh, difficult part was uh, developing uh, the current and future integration uh, schema system that uh, would allow us access not only uh, through the main term and uh, simple indices, but uh, in point access uh, to uh, uh, concrete to um, single meanings uh, either from a simple search or from a, a search par uh, uh, parameter parameterized uh, samples uh, search uh, so we can uh, well right we can transition uh, from uh, usual uh, stance of main term uh, dictionary entry 
to uh, uh, where main term is usually a single word to the um, system where where the registry the main term is every uh, every uh, term every collocation with uh, with uh, not to direct but with um, but, uh, with uh, semantic, semantic meaning that differs uh, from uh, any other. So uh, to well to evolve our dictionary in the future into a more complete, more intelligent system. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so maybe uh, there are some other questions. We have four minutes actually till till the end of our break which was supposed to start here yes, some six minutes ago but maybe we will sacrifice this break for discussion and uh, the next speaker will start uh, according to the program at uh, 10 minutes to uh, to 10 um, but maybe there are some other questions uh, to, to to these uh, speakers or to the previous one so dear audience you are welcome uh, yeah. If it's possible, I want to say, I want to ask a, a very yes, short, yes. Uh, very short question, and I hope uh, it will be a very short um, answer. Uh, to Evgen, uh, how do you think, uh, what is uh, the future of these researchers? So, uh, in uh, the future of uh, this uh, research, uh, Maybe in other languages, maybe in other uh, tasks. Uh, say me, please, what is the future of these researchers? Mm -hmm. uh, the future of uh, these uh, researchers have uh, both uh, theoretical and uh, uh, applied aspects. Uh, theoretical, uh, uh, theoretical um, aspect uh, will uh, include uh, uh, the further elaboration of the theory of uh, lexicographic uh, systems, uh, considering our uh, uh, previous uh, experience uh, with working um, uh, with uh, lexicographic works uh, of uh, different uh, uh, schools, for example, Oxford Dictionary, uh, Ukrainian Dictionary, including uh, uh, and uh, uh, develop theoretical framework. So deeply or wider. Uh, wider, uh, wider. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am very satisfied. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I guess we may move on uh, to, to our next uh, uh, speaker or uh, to be more precise, team of speakers, team of researchers. Um, Professor Natalia Sharonova, Irena. Kerechenko, Irena uh, Gruzdo, and Lip Tereschenko uh, from National Technical University, Kharkiv Polytechnic Institute. Uh, they will present uh, the research on generalized semantic analysis algorithm of natural language texts for various functional style types. This uh, report is from uh, National University of Radio Electronics, and oh. uh, this uh, report will be due um, Irina Kirichenko. I saw her. Yes, Irina, oh, you, yes. Are you are mute, please. Turn yes, on yes, uh, yes. Uh, good morning from Kharkiv. Oh. I try to find where I can uh, uh, click to show my slides because uh, it's not my note and uh, very deep. Uh -huh. We cannot so, see yeah. the presentation, so please yeah. share your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Okay, I find it. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, are you? Yes, we can see it, but you may. Oh, yeah, yes. it's okay. Uh, maybe. I it's okay. Know. Not. It's too big. Yes, try to try to change slides. Uh, you 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 see my slides? Yeah. Can you yes. see? Yes. 
Yes, uh -huh, we see, okay. but it seems to me it's too big because we, we see, uh, well, just a part of it, uh -huh. maybe make it a smaller, a bit smaller in size. Uh, it's uh, okay. It's, but it's no. in general, it, it's okay. In it's general, just, it's okay. Just, just a moment, I, I will try. That's fine. Well, it can be. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. uh, you will find a report uh, on the topics uh, on the topic generalized semantic anal analysis algorithm of uh, natural language text for various uh, functional style types by Natalia Sharonova, Irina Grozdo, Irina Kirichenko, and Glyp Tereshenko. Uh, this article is generally uh, devoted to, to solving the problem of uh, determining the meaning of uh, text documents uh, in, term of, in terms of uh, developing uh, in algorithm for semantic analysis of different uh, functional and uh, stylistic types of uh, natural languages text of various sizes. In the course of the study, the problem uh, that needs to be solved was uh, noticed, uh, namely, to, um, namely the lack of um, uh, sufficient uh, eff efficiency of existing methods for determining the meaning of text documents of uh, various types in uh, natural language. Uh, as well as the lack of an effective mechanism for determining the effect of semantic uh, proximity of text documents, taking into account uh, uh, paraphrasing <laughs> depending, <laughs> depending uh, uh, of different uh, functional and style types of text. Uh, as a result uh, of the above the uh, task of uh, creating an uh, effective information uh, took it um, for determining the meaning of text uh, documents and as a result a result explaining uh, the semantic uh, component of the text as a uh, whole or is relevant. Uh, in according in accordance uh, with this uh, 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 formulated uh, restricting uh, statements. Uh, statement of uh, the study task was uh, formulated and it is present uh, on these slides. Uh, in accordance uh, with this, uh, in the course of the study, uh, an analysis of the literature was performed uh, and uh, slide four presents uh, fragments of work of the problem under uh, consideration, uh, which uh, demonstrates the historical aspect of solving the problem. It uh, should be noted that uh, although there are a lot of works uh, that are solved within the framework of them, but the problem of uh, choosing uh, the necessary solution uh, that in the course of the analysis of the primary sources of the first work works devel uh, devoted to the topic of the work. Uh, a, a tendency was uh, noticed uh, to divide the works into uh, those uh, that uh, consider the solutions of um, abstract theoretical problems and those that are aimed uh, at the software implementation of solutions. Although many works have been devoted to, to solving this problem, uh, which have been devoid, developing uh, for more than uh, half a century, uh, but when applying classical models of uh, semantic analysis in uh, practice, uh, there is a, a Mm, uh, partial loss of the uh, main full meaning of the text, which in turn is not always justified, although it allows uh, you to perform some pr uh, procedures, uh, but uh, uh, at the same time misses a number of uh, features. It should be noted that all the, uh, the, approach, uh, the approaches and models uh, described in them are uh, aimed at uh, solving a specific problem and uh, therefore can be applied only for a narrow range, range of subject areas, 
and uh, depend uh, on the functional and style types of text and task, uh, tasks uh, that need uh, to be solved. Uh, similarity of uh, finding uh, depend, uh, dependencies uh, for forecasting. Mm -hmm. As you can see uh, it um, clearly on slide five, um, we can analyze the details of the text at uh, different levels, which depends uh, entirely on the chosen goal. Uh, semantic analyze, uh, analysis is used, for example, to create chatbots, search engines, and uh, in the task of analysis and improving the uh, competitiveness of uh, the enterprise. Uh, for automated uh, text anal analysis, uh, both uh, friendly, uh, simple, and the very complex models are used. Uh, large uh, companies around uh, the world are creating their own text analysis services, um, developing their own ecosystems. Uh, at the same time, uh, those practical solutions that have uh, proven a certain efficiency uh, item uh, of know-how and the mathematical uh, apparatus that underlies them is not av available uh, in the public domain. Uh, since there is a, a uh, dependence uh, between the pur uh, purpose uh, and uh, the class of use of the necessary models, depending on the functional and style types of text, it should be noted that the semantic of text uh, of different functional and style types is different part uh, is uh, different, but at the same time. Uh, uh, depending on the type of te uh, text itself. It helps to understand the essence of the text and uh, determine the uh, meanings depending uh, on its spe uh, specific interpretation within the framework of a particular uh, direction of uh, functional and stylistic text. Uh, and uh, these slides shows the functional and uh, stylist, uh, stylistic uh, types of text according to the classification of uh, Vinogradov, which just help to automate the process of determining the type of text, which in turn allows you to automatically select more appropriate algorithms for text analysis depending on the uh, type of work as well as uh, uh, thereby determine the specific relationship between a particular uh, function and stylistic text, effective methods for their analysis uh, and uh, what exactly is their, their differences, difference. Uh, it uh, should also be noted that uh, their functional stylistic to uh, topology uh, covers uh, uh, practically all texts, uh, considering them in all the variety of um, substanci uh, substantive uh, and linguistic. Uh, stylistic uh, features uh, styl and stylistic features. In general, uh, the function style classification can be represented, uh, represented it in uh, the form given on this slide. Uh, when so, uh, solving the problem of determining uh, the meaning of tech documents, um, it, it should be remembered uh, that each text is uh, characterized uh, by certain functional and style characteristics, uh, which determine a certain choice of means of uh, analysis at a, a particular time. And uh, inter uh, interpretations of the under understanding of uh, meaning, which ensure its uh, equivalence. Uh, therefore, one of the subtasks uh, sub uh, of semantic anal analysis is the allocation of uh, functional and style characteristics at the stage uh, of uh, pre-processing of the text. Uh, 
the classical semantic model uh, consists of the world itself. It's uh, definition uh, um, definition examples of uh, combining uh, it with others and uh, com uh, composing phrases uh, sentences. As shown in the fi uh, figure, uh, the text uh, is um, uh, tokenized, uh, broken into words, uh, filtered, uh, structured, and uh, classify, uh, cl uh, classified. There is different interpretations uh, of the process of semantic analysis. Uh, it all uh, depends uh, on the specifics of the document uh, documents and the type of uh, text work, which is uh, which in turn uh, complicates uh, the process of adapting existing model and models within the framework of the overall task of semantic text te text analysis. Uh, 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 despite the uh, success of uh, individual studies, uh, very little is uh, known about how well uh, pa uh, particular me methods works uh, in uh, comparison with each other and how sensitive uh, they are to changes uh, in various parameters and characteristics of text. It is also uh, difficult to understand how the search uh, for text similar in meaning echoes, echoes. Uh, what exactly are the methods for finding text of the same or similar subjects and uh, whether they take into account the functional and um, stylistic types of text arrays of information. Uh, this problem, uh, these problems are due to the fact uh, that the authors uh, do not disclose the algorithms of work, and uh, their works are considered uh, the subjects of know-how. And uh, due uh, to this, uh, we can say that uh, for 70 years, no common solutions uh, to the problem has uh, been found. Uh, related to de determine the meaning of text documents using semantic test uh, te uh, analysis. Uh, in most cases, the following models of semantic text uh, processing are used to determine the meaning of text documents using semantic analysis. Uh, linguistic transformations over text, content analysis, context analysis, uh, paragraph vector model, as well as uh, associ associative semantic analysis. Uh, further, uh, in the course of the study, the main algorithms, uh, algorithms uh, that underline them were analyzed. Uh, were, were analyzed. Uh, the result of uh, a detailed analysis, each of them is given on uh, slide uh, 1321. In the course of the anal analysis, uh, they were uh, studied and uh, their practical ap uh, applicability for solving their research problem was considered. In the uh, course, of, uh, course of the analysis, it was found uh, that when applying classical model of uh, semantic analysis in uh, practice, there is a, a partial loss of the uh, mean, uh, meaningful meanings of uh, the text, um, uh, which in uh, turn is not always justified, uh, justified although it um, allows uh, you to uh, perform some uh, procedures, but misses a number of uh, features. In the co uh, course of the analysis, it was found, uh, found that there is no universal meta code of semantic analysis. Uh, all of them uh, complement each other and uh, are aimed at uh, different goal task of text analysis. When you use uh, them uh, to analyze text of different volumes, the result is uh, completely different, uh, which means that we can say that uh, the use of one, uh, of one method is not enough to obtain, uh, obtain an, a more general assessment. 
in our previous slide, uh, a DPR study of these methods uh, was uh, carried, uh, carried out and uh, accordance with uh, which the paragraph vector model was uh, subsequently uh, chosen for more detailed study, as well as its uh, described memory and the described back of word methods. Uh, during the analysis, it was uh, revelated uh, that the use of the paragraph vector methods for semantic text analysis as a subtask, uh, subtask um, aimed uh, at uh, solving the problem of world pro uh, processing uh, in uh, the detection of uh, plagiarism, uh, as well as text recognition uh, is appropriate. It has also been experimentally uh, confirmed uh, that the additional time that will be allocated uh, to sem uh, semantic processing of text will not greatly affect uh, the overall process, uh, processing of text. Uh, on the uh, basic of uh, considered concepts and uh, existing so, uh, solution, a um, uh, meaningful, uh, meaningful uh, formulation of the task of uh, determining the meaning of text documents using semantic an analysis for different uh, functional and style types of text can be, uh, can be formulated. In uh, considers um, with the uh, substantial uh, statement uh, of the research problem given on slide two. Uh, to solve this problem, the following um, requirements uh, were in the uh, presented on this slide. Uh, in accordance with uh, the uh, requirements uh, of uh, the previous slide, the methodology for finding uh, bearings uh, uh, in the text uh, has been improved, uh, uh, taking into account the addition of uh, semantic analysis. Uh, the result is uh, a reflection uh, you can see on these slides. Uh, a developed uh, uh, Gen uh, general algorithm for the semantic analysis of uh, natural language text uh, for various functional uh, and style types has been de de uh, developed. Uh, this is a theoretical algorithm. It is necessary to perform its verification. For um, this, it is necessary to perform its progr uh, programmatic implementation. It can be said that such an algorithm, algorithm will uh, improve uh, the accuracy of the result obtained um, uh, early. Uh, by definition uh, of borrowings um, in the work, uh, because it will take into account uh, paraphrasing. Uh, also, to confirm the result, it is necessary to check the uh, uh, adequacy of the semantic analysis model, uh, taking into account the solution of the problem of the proximity of text de uh, depending on the functional and style uh, types of well, I guess our speaker has some problems. Irena, can you hear us? And dear partic participants, can you hear me? Maybe it's my problem. Yes, I do. We, I do hear yeah, you. we can hear yeah, you, but we can hear Irena. Uh -huh. Yes, something wrong. Something is wrong. Uh, uh, well, maybe we will uh, then turn back uh, to the just um, question and answer session when uh, Irena appears. Mm -hmm. uh, or, well, do we have authors? Yes, but I think so. It uh, was uh, the end, the finish of uh, her report. Her report. Okay. Then maybe we will invite our next speaker meanwhile. And uh, uh, after, yes, after our next speaker, uh, if uh, there are any questions, uh, we can uh, just uh, take uh, those questions.
Uh, so, dear participants, it's my great pleasure to introduce our next uh, uh, speaker, Professor Michal Garkart from University of Wroclaw. Uh, he will present his research on legal. I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, because I'm from Kharkov, it's in, in ethno stability. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, Irena. So, yeah. thank you, Irena. So now um, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. So we are going to listen to another speaker, and after that, uh, if there are some questions, so please, uh, we, we we would be grateful if you could. Uh, yeah, okay, answer. because it's um, yeah, uh, triboga. <laughs> Uh, um, alert! Uh, alert! So take in, care. In, in, in it, not stability uh, from this. Uh, well, yeah. Unfortunately, we have such. Mike, but but and I guess uh, Irina can end up her presentation. So if any questions or common song, they might follow then. And I wait up. Don't worry. Okay. My okay. 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 Great. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Michal. So Irina's recap. Yes. Uh, uh, your well research, maybe some final words, and uh, we are waiting for questions. Thank you, thank you. Aha, uh -huh. So, Irena, uh, what ca can you say in conclusion, as a conclusion? So, I guess we lost her again. Unfortunately, bad connection. I think uh, we, we can necessary, necessary uh, the next uh, report. Okay, so, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Michal Garkart, uh, so please, the floor is yours. We are eager to listen to language, legal language translation theory behind the practice. Thank you very much, Mariana. Thank you, everybody, uh, for having me here at this uh, absolutely magnificent uh, academic event. I'm thrilled to have my presentation. This will, uh, th this is not going to be any report, really, any uh, um, any very much uh, academic, deep, deeply rooted academic presentation, but uh, collected thoughts of a practitioner, someone who deals with uh, legal texts, uh, translator, also a, a professional language advisor. And uh, I will share my presentation. I tried doing that. Uh, please acknowledge you can it should be this. Please acknowledge you see my slides. Yes, we can see. Rolling. It's do okay. They, do they change? Um, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you scroll, they, they change. Um, slides rolling. Yeah. Terrific. Lovely. So uh, my presentation uh, today is on uh, legal... Uh, language translation activity and uh, um, and practice. In fact, I've collected few uh, theoretical implications on that issue. I will uh, bring them over um, and discuss them with you. There are two general questions, research question, if I can put it this way, uh, on that topic. The first uh, is what breed specialized language, legal language translation activity? And the answer is quite simple. By the way, my speech is not, not, not going to be uh, too big. I'm a few words man, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut a few on, on few minutes. Don't worry. Uh, so the first of these, uh, the, the first... Uh, the, the Rachka, I can't call you. It's always a little bit like this. You're a genius, you're a genius. Everything was very good. The first question, answer, the first question's uh, answer is, uh, these are lexical units and syntax. So both the, the, the uh, surface and deep structure analysis of the text, which is taken into um, commissioned translation. The second question is, what shapes specialized legal language translation? And uh, we're just hoovering into this speculative uh, region of uh, metatextuality. 
there are all possible symptoms of implicatures and explicatures ready to find or pickable, if, uh, if uh, I can put it this way, in the original, which is supposed to be resets, put one more time, repeat it, but not copy it in the target text. So uh, the mentioned lexicon and syntax of uh, legal language uh, and legal discourse texts, I can find two segments there. One is uh, very much stable. The other one is, I could call it swinging, which is this, give me a few seconds, I'm gonna drive to it smoothly. So the, the stable one is, uh, includes uh, archaisms, technical terms, foreign words. Yes, by foreign words, I obviously understand all lexical um, units, but also syntactic transformations, which are possible to be made in today's uh, European languages that travel to it um, the, via uh, today, English, uh, earlier on French, but uh, basically through Latin via uh, direct uh, copying, so borrowing, or via transliteration when we talk about um, uh, languages using other alphabets as Ukrainian or Russian, for instance, or Serbian. Um, synonymy and words repetitions. The, the, this segment I called stable. The other one, which is a, sta a swinging, uh, sorry, which is a, a swinging um, uh, segment, uh, this swingability, I calculate on the premises of um, possible uh, variants of spelling ready to find uh, in terms of lexical units having the same or quite the same, very much similar syntactic charge uh, circulating in, in languages. Uh, I, of course, refer to here, uh, here to um, the, the English language provenance words borrowed into our national languages. One of these, this is the example of a word borrowing, a, a, a word manager borrowed into uh, Polish, uh, and you can find in the Polish language of today, three, three preserved uh, spelling of this particular uh, English, lang the English language word, which I, and, and which in my humble opinion was, is, is useless to, to implement in, in the communication, language communication since the Polish language records, a phrase, uh, which weights the same semantically, that is Kierownik uh, Szczebla, high rank manager. Uh, so the swingability, sorry, the swingability uh, that I can find in uh, the second sector of the le legal language lexicon is ready to, to be found in euphemisms. There are 10 of these, euphemisms, uh, polysemy and homonymy, uh, which I take as sublings, Vulgarism, ladies and gentlemen. So, so think about legal discourses, legal texts, uh, which take the form of um, legal utterance in court courtroom hearings when uh, evil emotions stir bad blood. And what what it end up with? Okay, with the 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 the, the use of uh, just flood of vulgarisms, which are elements of legal uh, language discourse text to be translated, so delivered from the original to, to translation. We can forget that. Metaphors, um, um, neologisms, of course, uh, quasi synonyms starts with, with unstable meaning, so novel sounding words, phrases too, but also, um, uh, but also uh, uh, words and phrases with, mis with the novel spelling convention. Uh, definitions, uh, casual language uh, vocabulary. Yes, of course, in this category, I put also um, frozen expressions or, or, or uh, binomial expressions, fixed phrases as uh, the last will and testament, uh, aid and abet, uh, in the natural sense. Sorry, I have some te technical difficulty, but if, uh, if I vanish, if I disappear from the screen, just let me know. I'm gonna do some. Uh, I'm gonna do some magic to be uh, to be back on. In terms of uh, the legal language syntax features, uh, I find uh, seven of these. 
most prominent ones. So nominalization, passives, with deletion, uh, conditionals, prepositional phrases, and uh, on top of the, the greatest hits, let's so on the top of the, the cherry, uh, the sentence length and complexity. We can't forget that in the flood of all specialized texts, whatever these, whatever discourse, discourse is, they touch. Legal language texts are the most words heavy and more most uh, syntax uh, and the most syntax uh, complex. Uh, I use Gustafsson's reference. Average sentence, the legal language sentence contains 55 words, so twice as much as, uh, twice as many as in um, uh, the technical or scientific discourses. And there are 2.86 clauses per sentence in the legal style. 2.86. That means that those sentences are not that huge, but that that thing. So uh, complexity comes in song, complex, uh, syntax complexity comes in song with each and every uh, legal language translation uh, line. Uh, what is responsible for it? I can, I, I at least uh, point out three uh, syntax constructors, the constructions um, that's, uh, that, that stand behind the reason why uh, so legal language syntax is so complex and those sentences are lengthy, lengthy so much. Unique determiners, impersonality and negatives. Of course, binomial expressions and uh, parallel structures, especially, uh, especially uh, uh, parallel structures, uh, binomial expressions, they are very um, um, precise and pinpointing tool in naming or incorporating, incorporating uh, con um, uh, conditions, relationships, and objects, which a given uh, piece of legal text or section of this does refer to. Uh, now I, I was referring to both the surface and the deep structure of um, legal uh, discourse uh, uh, texts. Now I need to uh, speak about a few um, translation aspects of this particular discourse. So, so first of all, what, what the, uh, the uh, legal translator is expected to do with and to detect at the same time. We need to remember the, 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 at, this, at every single translation act, the, the translator does something to the text and does something with the text. So what are these? Uh, to, first of all, to keep, uh, Okay, to uh, keep the form of the, uh, the translated text, uh, the form, so the su surface layer, uh, unaltered in the, at maximum in the target uh, text. So the very first translator's priority here uh, in their job uh, when, they, uh, um, when they execute uh, the, the translation service is, to, is this must to first assess the formal status of the, the very text he's trans he or she is translating as well as its uh, formality, formality level uh, creator marker. I'm referring to here, here I'm referring to uh, the plain language mechanism a little bit, which derails uh, this expectation, which I myself as a target, as a legal text, uh, uh, translator's final job uh, 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 recipient wants him or her to have in mind, not to plane off the text. The second thing is to keep the essence of the text unaltered, possibly unaltered, uh, on this essence level in the target uh, text. So to pay attention to keeping the deep structure uh, level of the original uh, as contextually heavily anchored in the uh, in the context, so as context heavy in translation as one as it once was in the uh, original. Uh, to avoid using this mechanical word for word substitution, some of uh, translation translators or translation specialists call it transla 
call it a translation procedure. I beg to differ. Uh, word for word is not translation to me. Activity. This is this is rather uh, uh, some language, some lexical swap. All we need is just two dictionaries, and we just uh, just uh, mechanically copy words or phrases from one language to another. So, without sometimes without uh, minding the uh, naming standards, um, both the national and international, or over national, as I prefer to call it. Uh, levels. So all in all, uh, the translator is at least the way I see it as uh, a, a his, her target language uh, um, activity product is to find the originals uh, symptoms of applicatures and explicatures and to and try to um, recreate not not to copy, to recreate them in the target, uh, in the target text. How to do that? Um, oh, how to make sure that the number of the original uh, originals implicatures and explicatures would not be lost on this on this long journey via meanders of languages and cultures to keep the specialized coherence of the text uh, unaltered in the target text and to keep the translators focus on legal discourse features uh, present in specialized uh, translations. So as far as the first one, uh, specialized purposes that lie at the uh, foundation of specialized discourses, whatever these might be, ladies and gentlemen, whatever these might be. In this case scenario, we're discussing the legal uh, uh, discourses are set uh, and verified by the users. So those who pinpoint scopus, what I want you to with this text and what I want you to do to this text. So I, as a commissioner, tell you how you're supposed to end up with the story. Yes, you know how to uh, perfectly mechanically put it in, but I tell you what I want this text to be used for, okay? Uh, and so sometimes experts in the in the given scope of profession, the, 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 this is the, the final target text audience uh, to, to which the commissioner uh, wants to, the, the translator to uh, hook up the, the whole uh, essence and uh, text level, uh, uh, the surface level elements combined in the translation and apply the style sheet of the uh, target text language with accepted uh, uh, or used across the board specialist phrases, uh, collocations in specialized uh, legal discourse. That means that language of uh, legal provision and the language of legal norms, they both should wait up. I, uh, yes, uh, I assume this is the idealistic approach, but uh, this is the very starting point we have to just cross uh, this line, uh, which we, uh, should at least uh, never try to uh, break. The, the second, the, keep the focus of the legal discourse features present in the target and specialized translations. Well, uh, these are both discourse and uh, um, registers. We need to remember, think about the, this, um, I mentioned before by me a few minutes ago, uh, courtroom hearings. Uh, depending on, uh, what is the register formality or informality kept of, in the original? The translator is not to soothe out, for instance, vulgarism, swear words, uh, which not accidentally take place in, uh, the, in the defendant's speech, uh, since the, uh, the judge never speaks this language, never spoke that, uh, the, the, the defendant's language. So uh, the, that's the, the translator's uh, expect, that's the translator's uh, uh, job. That's the translator's, uh, the, 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 the target language scope is uh, uh, demand that is put on translator to uh, never lower nor, nor raise it, lower it down or raise it up in terms of uh, register. And uh, there are eight variants of legal text uh, translation aspects, which can be verified in terms of uh, how effectively uh, legal uh, texts are repeated in, from the original into translation in terms of register. And there we have, there we have those. Textuality inter, 
uh, intentionality and acceptability, informality, uh, information structure, textual uh, uh, relevance, intertextuality, cohesion, and coherence, theme, ream, relationship. And this is, of course, the reference, clear reference to syntax. Concluding remarks, uh, few only. Uh, legal translation uh, realizes scopus mentioned before by me via three platforms, thematic environment of the text, center versus periphery approach to translation unit. I, I, I've said that before, the, there are possibly different, uh, versatile rather than different uh, ways of uh, uh, um, putting down the words in spelling. So preserving the, uh, the orthography convention. And there are few of these, which are, uh, which are used in informal communication, and these are different here, uh, but in the central lies the genus, which is across the board accepted as uh, the uh, only correct one. So that's the second point reference, uh, compactness of the text surface layer. So syntax and uh, a lexicon, lexical text organization. Specialized legal discourse translation, translators should keep a few, uh, a few rules when fulfilling the translation service. And uh, I find three of those. Translate the text faithfully. So as if this is possible, forget about the, those, those mechanical, this monkey fashion, parrot fashion, uh, swapping the original lexical unit into the whatever that is in, in context one, two, in, in meaning, uh, the target language text uh, word and phrase. So applying this word for word translation procedure. Mind the contextual embedding of both the, uh, the text uh, on the micro level, which is word, words, phrase, this, this, this particular uh, uh, level and the micro level though. So the level of the whole chapters, for instance, or the entire text, if you please. Mind the stylistic composition of translated text. So if that is possible, stick to the high register and manage the target text to the fullest, trying never sacrificing both the surface and the deep structure because there is a need to implement the plain language policy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I present, uh, I prepared for my presentation. Thank you very much for uh, listening to uh, these few words. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to at least try answering them all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michal. So are there any questions? We have time, I guess, for one or two small questions. Well, can I? Yes, of course, Natalia. Uh, hello, dear oh. professor. <laughs> so I have uh, the question so concerning the stylistic uh, peculiarities and syntactic peculiarities you mentioned. Yeah. You can see that it's possible to transform these huge um, syntactic structures in translation. So for example, to, to apply separation of sentences. So, so change the order of sentences, or it is impossible uh, and this should be avoided well in legal translation. So especially uh, when it, um, uh, uh, so we can send the, the written form legal text so and what is the the practice well in, in polish uh, uh well how, how do you cope with this task so uh, uh relating the english and polish syntax uh, and structures mm -hmm. thank you very, professor thank you very much very much for this question uh i uh, uh i assume that each and every legal text translator um has to be ready to answer such one uh, I'm on a, uh, my, uh, my realistic uh, answer will be a little bit of disillusion to you. Unfortunately, uh, yes, the Polish language, as well as the Ukrainian, the, the Russian languages, uh, we use over, uh, overbuilt, flex, flexibly, we, we use overbuilt uh, sentences. We can take a one large sentence and chop it into smaller pieces, never sacrificing the meaning. Yes, we are, we are ready to do that. But how to manipulate uh, a bunch of short English language uh, sentences, which are set in one lofty, very huge paragraph, uh, 
and which uh, uh, of which the text is very much heavy. I'm going to give you a, a, a reference to, um, uh, to an evidence you can all, ladies and gentlemen, find on the web. These are the official EU regulations, which are translated from English to all other EU languages. And if you open up a legal text that straws for 80 pages and confront just on the surface layer, the original English and the Polish language translation, they seem exactly the same. No, they don't seem, they are exactly the same in terms of text, uh, uh, text realization. So the question you've put forward uh, is complex to, uh, to answer uh, for two reasons. Yes, I assume we, we, as the target language text users, we should sacrifice this order of the original if there is any need that our commissioner puts an obligation on, on us to do that, because this is a scopus. But on the, second, uh, on the other hand, who's verifying such translation? In this case scenario, the EU text, these are the EU officials who approve the target language text variants of the original. I, I did say that, uh, I did say that uh, two times that such translation should be, uh, such text should be translated, which is repeated, but never copied automatically. And in terms of such very long, juicy texts, unfortunately, I'm afraid they are copied. So, uh, Professor, I'm very eager sometimes to sacrifice this order, uh, which we find in uh, legal text. But if they are of such magnitude, one, two, they are so long, th uh, three and four, uh, the scopus maker is not the target language commissioner, but the source language commissioner. Um, this decision is out of our hands, I believe. Thank you, thank you, Professor. You left us with very good food for thought. Thank you for your practical tips. And uh, uh, thank you. And uh, now, uh, dear participants, like let's take a short break, uh, 10 minute break. Uh, we will resume our meeting in 10 minutes. That is uh, at uh, uh, 10.48. Super. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. See you.